Hey, so I'm up in the Frank Church Wilderness River of No Return. I uh, just finished up a three day bear hunt. Have all my gear laying out because although it's sunny right now, that has been the opposite of what it's been the last three days. So everything's laid out, drying out, and it's a good opportunity to go over what gear I have. I've spent um, a lot of time and effort the last few years building uh, for me the perfect packing list. So all this gear is tested. Uh, most of it got tested in a 10-day uh, sheep hunt last year in Alaska that was just, uh, the weather was, was murder as well. So I'll just go through everything that I pack uh, for my packing list, Western Big Game packing list. This stuff is designed for high country uh, or, or in back country stuff that will get you through um, and help you survive and also be successful on a extended hunt in the high country. So first off, I use a um, big Agnes Fly Creek ultralight tent. It comes with a cover, it's just drying out right now. Uh, I think it does really well. It's lightweight. Um, it's so tight that I do have some issues with the moisture building up um, and getting on my sleeping bag, but we'll cover that in a minute away. You can work on that. Uh, I just tried the first trip. I had a big Agnes pad that unfortunately, after seven or eight years got about a dozen holes in it and finally wouldn't work anymore. But um, so I went and tried the Sea to Summit um, ultra light pad. Uh, I love it. I think it's, I think it did great. Again, only four nights on it. Did really good. Um, no holes yet. Held its, held its air all night. Easy to blow up, quick to blow up. Doesn't take a dozen. It doesn't take 10 minutes to actually blow up either. Like my old big Agnes. Um, of course, uh, you need a footprint for your pack or for your, for your sleeping pad make sure you don't get a hole in it. Um, that one doesn't fit, but it doesn't really matter. That's not that big a deal. Uh, I take my, my sleeping bags in here. I use a North Face Summit Series bag. It's a zero degree bag. Um, and it's, I think, just over a pound. It's fantastic. It's 850 goose fill. Um, I would suggest going with something in that super light, super lightweight range, but super low temperatures. When it does drop down into 10 and 15 degrees, I can throw on some extra layers and I'm still comfortable. Um, whereas if you're in a 20 or 30 degree bag, you're gonna you're gonna freeze all night. You're not gonna have fun. So this is my first trip taking this Helinox uh, ultralight chair. Um, I will not go home without. I will not go out in the woods without this again. This makes glassing for four or five hours a, a game changer. Significantly better. Um, than sitting on a rock or on your pack. Um, and it just makes it where you can really stay comfortable and stay in the game a lot longer. So I've never taken it before. It's an extra 14 ounces or whatever, um, but it was worth it. For sure it was worth it. We'll go over clothing. This trip was supposed to be lows in the 40s. Uh, I was completely wrong. Temperature blew in or weather blew in a blizzard actually. It dropped in the 20s, 18 hours of snow. And then now it's probably high 50s. So. This is my, for clothing, this is my bake, basic gear packing list. Uh, if I were doing a late season hunt that might be in the single digits, I'd, I'd definitely throw in some extra layers. But I usually take a t-shirt, doesn't really matter, but my, my base layers are gonna be wool for sure. Um, of course, we know that wool will, um, is antimicrobial, and it will, um, it also is gonna keep you, keep some warmth even when you're, uh, even when it's wet. So um, as long as it's a quality wool, I use a smart wool t-shirt, it doesn't really matter on my, but I wear also a long sleeve. Um, I've been the last two trips in this first light long sleeve. Um, Pull over, I think it's fantastic. Um, next off, I don't go anywhere anymore without this. It's an 800 goose fill uh, ultralight marmot jacket. Again, I don't think it's if you use marmot or Patagonia or whatnot. I don't think it really matters. I prefer that over these big puffy um, stuff like Cryptek and Sitka and stuff have. I just think it's lighter. It does such a good job. I don't need, at least on these trips that don't get below 20, 25, I don't need um, something that's three pounds and huge. Um, I've tried out a couple of different Gore-Tex. I used to not take Gore-Tex layers that seriously and after three trips in a row that did nothing but rain and snow on me, uh, I think it's one of my most important pieces of gear. 
This is your life-saving gear. Um, when you get stuck, let's say you were alone and, and got hurt, and um, you get stuck in a snow or rainstorm, if this stuff leaks, your life is on the line. If it doesn't leak, um, if it keeps you dry, it can it could literally save your life, and it keeps you in the fight longer. I was able to hunt this trip through 18 hours of snow, two days, and then it turned to two days of rain. Um, and I hunted the entire time. I basically wore this stuff almost the entire time. It never soaked through. Um, so it really kept me hunting a lot longer. The last trip I used, um, the Cryptek, um, Gore-Tex that was in the, uh, in this Highlander pattern. I forget what model it is. I'll be honest. I wasn't impressed at all. 30 minutes of straight rain and it soaked through and it really limited me. I was, I was having to stay hunkered down up in the tent on those long series of rain because I couldn't, I couldn't get wet. I was 30 miles in the back country. I couldn't afford for my, um, my base layers to get wet. So, uh, I'll give it to Cryptek though. I called their customer service. Um, they were freaking awesome. Did not need hardly any explanation at all. I said, Hey, I was in the back country, 30 minutes. It soaked through and that was enough said, uh, they immediately gave me a discount on some other stuff. So I wanted to try two different pieces. I went with, um, I went with First Light's jacket. I think this is called the Seek. It's their top of the line jacket. Performed marvelously. My brother wore this in, um, in Alaska on the sheep trip with me. He never soaked through. That was 13 straight days of rain. Um, so it was proven for him. It was proven for me in a three day hunt here up in the high country of Idaho. But I uh, still wanted to give Cryptek another try. I, I go with some other Cryptek gear. I think their gear is great. So I tried their new pants. Uh, and I think this is the Altitude series, if I remember right. Um, and uh, first off, love the pattern, especially when I was, I, I ultimately drifted down into this low country once the snow pushed me out and I didn't find any bears. But I was at 9,000 feet in shale um, and I thought the pattern was great. It's a great sheep pattern, but I think it fits in here too. I think the greens and the, uh, the light colors and the grays would fit in really well um, up in the brush. So I think it did awesome. 18 straight or three three straight days of precipitation never soaked through my pants stayed dry it's the first time i've ever been hunting and had that so i loved it um another piece piece i don't leave home without i use the dalibor um cryptex dalibor and highlander the jacket and the pants um i think they're really fantastic they're they're light enough on a on a 65 degree day climbing the pants are a little maybe a hair on the um warm side but they do just fine and um then again drops down in the 20s and as long as i'm moving um going making big movements and big gains the uh they do they just do great uh they're really lightweight they're athletic they breathe really well even when they do get wet they breathe out these pants i wore on a elk hunt a few years ago in colorado before i had good gore-tex it literally poured rain and snow again, 14 straight days. My pants stayed soaking wet because my Gore-Tex wasn't good. And they still performed every day. Um, moving on, I keep all my clothes. I think these Sea to Summit bags that condense are fantastic. I carry two. I keep my, as you saw, I keep my tent in one. I keep all my clothes in the other. They really help to compact everything. Um, because as you're going to see when you have a, these extended backcountry hunts, your, your pack's just going to get overwhelmed. So you've got to make as much space as possible. Um, of course, a couple game bags, um, toilet paper as per usual. And I carry three little, three little extra. These are outdoor research bags. It doesn't really matter what they are. Um, along with me and I keep multiple things in here. One's going to be kind of my survival gear. So I keep a little bit of electrical tape. This is a um, Outdoors Edge Razor Light skinny knife. I carry uh, three extra blades. I used to only use my um, Benchmade, but of course it wears out on you on an animal. And if you have to use it for survival stuff beforehand, you're gonna wear that blade out. So. Love this bench made. It's been through steer school with me. This thing is um, this thing is just tough as nails. Uh, wouldn't go anywhere without it anymore. 
but I really don't want to use it unless I have to. It's more of a backup for me. So, um, or when I'm having to, to pop the pelvis on an animal or something or the hips. So anyway, um, I use this for all my skinning. I carry, this thing weighs an ounce, a little bitty sewing kit. Comes in super handy when you rip your pants 30 miles in the back or 10 miles back. Goal Zero charging um, device charger for my phone and GPS works fantastic. I can get through if I'm if I'm modest on my phone use and GPS use with this. I can get through two weeks in the backcountry. I carry multiple lighters. Two is one, one is none, as we all know. Um, so on my super life saving gear, I was carrying multiple multiple um, options here. I have two little. And this is probably unnecessary, but I keep I keep two little things of um, fire starting stuff. I'm probably gonna combine it down to one in the future. But again, um, extra matches, um, all this different stuff that can help keep me alive. And I'm not an expert on um, on getting a fire going in the back country, but I was able to use this stuff this last time when it was uh, a foot of snow and it worked really well. Next little baggie I keep. Is some medical stuff. Uh, athletic tape to help blisters or if you got a, if you had a bad ankle roll, it'd be perfect. I always carry a tourniquet. Um, you have a femoral artery bleed, you're dead uh, in 90 seconds. So I always carry, this is a soft tee, love it. Per it works quick. Um, if you have a bad fall or do have a bear attack, and have an artery torn, you're gonna you're gonna need it. I always take a little baggie of of extra um, NSAIDs. Something I won't go home without again, or take, go in the woods without again, is some sort of cleansing wipes, alcohol pads that remove bacteria. I got a blister that got infected in Alaska, and I would have been in a jam, but my brother-in-law had some uh, of these, so I keep extra these heavy, thick band-aids for blisters. They work really well. Of course, mole skin and an emergency blanket. And third of my little bags. Sorry, I'm having to open this. This is my gear that I use a lot. I keep two headlamps. This is a black diamond, a little cheaper one. I also have a nicer black diamond that's um, that uh, has really good, really high lumens. I keep two. Two is one, one is none. Tried some fishing this time. Um, I don't know why I keep doing this. I brought a tiny fishing pole and some bait. Every time I regret it, I never catch anything. So wouldn't take that again. Of course, uh, iPhone charging cable, extra rounds. Let's talk about bullets real quick. I use um, Cold Zero ammunition out of West Texas. Um, Aaron Royal makes these. These are semi-custom in that uh, he hand loads them but they're not necessarily for my rifle. They they shoot so well, really great, um, really great ammo. Not any more price than your Nosler Trophy, not any more higher price than your Nosler Trophy grades or anything like that. Um, eventually I'd love for him to actually do a hand load for my gun since I don't load. But uh, until then, these do really well. Extra batteries are a must. Couple three extra um, triple A's and uh, for my range finder. Um, also, a more antibiotic treatment for in case I get an infected blister. And of course, a little bit of paracord. <sighs> Gloves. Outdoor Research is such a just an awesome company. I use these even, even on a hot summer trip if I'm in a scree field. I use them to help keep from cutting my hands if I fall when I'm getting wet at, at night. And also, um, if it gets cold, these are, of course, I, I carry some bigger, heavier outdoor researches when I'm in a winter hunt, but these little thin rock climbing glo gloves do great. I've got some Arcteric ones that do really well too. They're just not as tough. Uh, I mean, it was in the 20s snowing. My hands weren't warm, but it did the job. Um, it kept me kept me moving. Pack, Mystery Ants is such a great company. Um, I know other people swear by their bags. I'd be interested to try some of those. But Mystery Ranch, I've I've been in, in only Mystery Ranches now for the last 10 years, 8 years. They do really good. I had their big um, expedition pack, their military pack, which I really loved. I loved all the molly on it and I could make attachments. Uh, it was just a little heavy. So I dropped down uh, to their Mystery Ranch Marshall, which is just as big 
it's basically without molly and i think i saved three pounds it's still i think there's some bags out there that are pound or two lighter uh, i'm sure they're great bags but this is what i've used this is two hunts in this i think it's done really great i've had up to 120 pound loads on that sheep hunt you know that's never comfortable but it carries it as good as you're going to carry it i've been just slightly disappointed and and maybe it's just i've been rough on it but it's had a couple of little nicks nothing bad um the waist strap too has had a little just just a couple little snags um not the end of the world still think it's a great bag i have no regrets getting it and uh again we're back here in some really rough country so it's expected um never go home without a pack cover that thing will save you a lot of weight if your bag starts getting drenched um i carry will never hunt again without uh trekking poles so i carry the black diamond Alp, alpine carbon core um they're all carbon which a lot of people don't like because they'll snap on you easier but they are ultra ultra lightweight i love the core candles these things are just I mean, I would never, ever go into high country again without them. Uh, I tried an elk hunt a few years ago and I had to pack out without trekking poles. And I fell and I fell and I fell. I think, they, I think they're a safety changer. I think they keep you from breaking an ankle or a leg. Um, I've been on them a couple, of, a couple times when I've fallen and caught a rock. I'm really mindful, so I let go of them to try not to break them. I haven't had any problems yet. Uh, I'm super happy with them. I've gone through a couple pair of gators. I had Kuyus, which I loved, and left them in Wyoming on a hunt. If you find them near Sheridan, please send them back to me. Um, and they did great, but they've been sold out every time I've tried to buy them since. So then I used Outdoor Research last year. They did really good. Uh, I didn't like they were all black, though, and they did get a little tear on them, so I sent them back. And this year I tried Kinetrek, really, to be honest, just because they had a great sell, and I got these things for 50 bucks, which is phenomenal. Um, and I was a little bit, um, suspicious over them. They're, they're just not as heavy around the, the high end. They're just more flaccid, if you will. Um, so, um, I was worried they wouldn't be as tough, but they did great. Again, only three days. They've done really great. The bottom is double lined to make it a little tougher. So did really good for me while we're on, um, while we're on clothing, I wear the, these are the only boots I wear. They're the Loa Evo Extremes, uh, 200 grams. They're super fantastic boots. I had buddies on the sheep hunt in Mindles. Um, somebody was wearing a pair of La Sportivas and another guy was wearing the, um, oh, I can't remember, a different pair, high quality boots. Regardless, everybody's boots did okay but everybody left saying they'd get a pair of mine. Um, don't forget that when you're doing 10 miles a day or 15 miles a day, your feet are gonna hurt no matter what. There's no way around it. Um, so, but with that being said, uh, these boots do really great. They have a high, the rubber around it is, is really high, which is nice when, when walking in sludge. They look to soak through. It, again, three straight days of precipitation. They're not, my feet's been dry the entire time. A lot of support, great traction. Love these boots. Um, only boot I'm gonna buy from now on. Um, glass. So for spotting scope, I use the Vortex Razor HD. I use the ultra light one, 11 to 33 by 50. Uh, I'd give it a B. It's, it's good glass. Um, of course, I'd love some Suaros that are 60 power, but I'm just not gonna add, they're not so important to me that I'm gonna add that kind of weight. They do really good in that like 20 power range, which is good enough for me to, to at least see if it's an animal I want to pursue at a mile. Uh, but out at 30 power, they're a little bit foggy. Again, the Vortex um, Summit SSs. These do good. Um, I don't love this type of locking system. I think it's a little janky, but they work good. Um, I've just had some different stuff with it and I don't think it's the best design. But again, not bad. They function well, a slight on the heavy side. I'd love to try some carbon ones, a carbon tripod. Um, but those, of course, as you know, get really pricey. So, um, of course, never go home without my Jetboil. I'm sure other companies are great, but this thing's, this I've had this thing, I think, 12 years. 
I've put it through the ringer. It does really well. At least one of these jet powers. Cup, Cita Summit. This is an interesting piece of gear that I wouldn't normally talk about, but in Alaska, I the one piece of gear I haven't carried and I'll never not carry again is some sort of rifle cover. In Alaska, because we're in grizzly country, I left around the chamber for three or four days and I went to take it out and it was corroded in there. If it wouldn't have been for this little spoon, I wouldn't have been able to dig that round out. So this spoon saved me. Um, I'm sold on you, see to Summit. Thank you for that. Two is one, one is none. So I always carry two water sources or, or ability to carry uh, water two different ways. A lot of people get caught up on wanting to be able to boil water. I think it's important. I probably should carry some sort of lightweight aluminum extra can. I do figure if I had to, I could boil water um, just using this. Even if the uh, even if the the burner broke. Uh, with that being said, I carry one little extra um, bladder. Doesn't weigh anything. I don't ever use it. It's just in case my big bladder breaks. I've had this platypus pouch for probably 12 years. It's phenomenal. Hasn't broke. Never leaks. Water filtration. I've carried uh, three or four different types of um, of water water pumps. Every one of them has been so frustrating. In Alaska last year, I had one of the hand pump ones. I don't remember the company, but it um, it just was a mess. Once we got in silty water, wouldn't would not filter out. It took forever. Um, I saw somebody using a catadine, so I tr I've tried it this trip. Fantastic. Um, just filters water immediately. Uh, no calories spent pumping water for 30 minutes. So I'll never go home again without it. And then two is one, one is none, as I keep saying. So um, I carry some uh, water purifying tablets just in case that thing does go down on me. Um, food. Food's uh, ultra important. You're going to need the calories when you're burning seven to 10,000 calories a day. You're going to need to have the right kind of calories, as many calories as possible. But food's your biggest factor on weight. All this other stuff, I can probably get under 40 pounds uh, without the rifle, um, maybe 35, but your foods where your weight's going to either soar through the roof or you're not going to have enough calories. Um, depending on how much energy I think I'm going to exert, I try and carry between 30, 200, and 4,000 calories a day. So my calories per ounce needs to be at least 150 um, calories per ounce or it's not worth carrying. So I also, there's too much to think about up here, so I want to keep it simple. So I got a, um, I got a uh, vacuum sealer bag thing. I've already snuck the coffee out of this one, so. Um, but I vacuum seal all my snacks and breakfast for one day, and then I break down my dinners and lunches uh, here too. I'll show you what I carry. Um, what I carried this trip will get me around 3,000 calories. I carry two of these super fats. They're awesome, yummy. Um, I carry two of these meals to go. This is my breakfast every morning. I love green belly meals. They're, they're pretty tasty and I absolutely love that I can wake up, not cook anything. Um, the only water I'm heating is for coffee. Have one of these and, and be out the way, be on my way. Um, I carry two or three, three of these little packets a day. A lot of use, I've used the, um, Starbucks stuff. It's good too. I'm a little bit of hippie, so I like this Mount Hagen uh, organic coffee. It's just as good as Starbucks or better. Uh, and then I carry um, some really high quality beef jerky. And the, the name um, of it is uh, escaping me right now, but regardless, um, it's got good calories per ounce. And then lastly, I break down my dehydrated meals. This is actually four meals. I just dump the bags into there and this is actually for four meals. So this is two days worth of food right here. Um, and I'll carry two or three extra little actual bags that they come in and I'll just use them for two or three days to heat the to heat the uh, meals up. Don't forget about that. But that way it just cuts down on my trash, cuts down on weight. Again, we're just trying to get everything as compact as possible. When you leave all your meals in its packaging, it's just a massive amount of crap at the end uh, and it takes up extra space in your bag. Um, Little Bible, of course. Love that, especially when I'm alone. Have some really, really good time to just read and connect with the Lord. I always carry a compass. These Lenzada compasses from the military are fantastic. They work. Um, 
they're protective i think though i'd switch to a, a lightweight one it's just it is really heavy camp shoes i've tried out these zero shoes the last two trips uh if i'm gonna carry a camp shoe this is what i'd carry crocs feel better and they keep the water out but they're a lot heavier these things really are good i wear these all the time but i'm probably not going to take them hunting anymore every time i go in the back country it's always soaking wet back here i end up staying in my boots at night anyway because i don't want cold wet feet um so if you're going to carry them i love them but i just wouldn't carry them anymore all right lastly i keep all my high my stuff that's um, ultra important on my chest from the military, I want everything that I need right then and there on my chest, so that's what I still do now. Um, I also carry this on my arm. We'll get into, um, for long range shooting, I use this Kestrel 4500 NV Horus. Um, amazing software, able to um, confidently shoot out as far as I need to, depending on the wind. But for a quick shot, if I only have a few seconds, I like to carry one of these little um, sniper bands on my arm. I keep it on my arm, I open it up, I've got my, um, I've got my wind, all my wind is over here, which never changes, and then on this side over here, I, I pre-print this and carry a pen, and so once I get up in here, this is my yardage, so once I get up in here um, and get a read from my Kestrel on what my range card is going to be, I make a quick, um, uh, quick hand card on that one. I always carry one of these little, you see these all the time on my neck. They're fantastic. They don't bother me. Um, again, cold zero ammo. Ammo. I usually keep these in a little Ziploc or something to keep them dry. Some extra ear buds. Uh, wind powder. Bottom, I keep my GPS slash Delorme inReach. That thing's amazing. I'll we'll never go home without it. This is my first time using an Alaska Guide Creations. I had a, um, I, I had a different one before. And uh, actually I used a, an old patrol vest with all my stuff on it. That was pretty cool because I had a lot of different compartments, but it was too heavy. I went to this Alaska Guide Creations. Um, I think this is the, like the hybrid or something. I think it's perfect. It has just enough space for everything I need. Uh, I had a loophole, a thousand, I think, um, spotting or range finder. Wasn't really impressed. Getting out past 600 was, was a pain. I went to this SIG 2200 MR. This thing's a friggin' champ. Um, all day long, shooting trees and rocks and hillsides at a thousand, as long as it's not pouring snow. That thing's awesome. Um, wouldn't go home without it. Binoculars. I um, have been tempted, like everybody else, to spend $3,000 on some Suaros. If I were gonna spend that kind of money, it would only be on a range finding binocular just to cut out one more step. Um, but I'm not made of money. And so I tried a few different binoculars out. I think there's some really quality stuff. I think the Razor, the Vortex uh, Razor stuff is really quality, um, pound per dollar. I think it's great. I ultimately with these, these are Cabela's. Um, they're the Cabela's Meoptis, um, Cabela's Euro, and then the 10 by 42 HDs. Um, they're, they're uh, just a hair on the heavy side. I'll give them that. But I think for, I got them on a great black Friday deal. Three, I think $300 off. Uh, I think they're absolutely fantastic. I have no complaints, no plans on, um, replacing those. I think I paid $500. And if I look in those versus a pair of $3,000 binoculars, the difference is not $2,500 worth. So, uh, I think these run closer to a thousand now, but they're still really good binoculars so um with all that said that's that and um happy hunting